If you're a woman sledder and you're just getting into the sport and you keep hearing about proper handlebar setup, but you have no idea what they're even talking about, or if you're looking for some tips and advice for a shorter rider, then you have come to the right place. But first, hey, I'm Angelisa. I'm a snowmobile enthusiast and I've been backcountry mountain sledding for the past 11 years. Now, three years into my sledding journey, I discovered the importance of setting up your snowmobile to you. So because I am shy of five feet, I had to do a whole lot of modifications. I had to try products to figure out what worked for me. A lot of these sleds are meant for men that are six feet plus. It's important for us to take these steps, do some modifications, some tweaks to customize our sleds. I wanna save you the headache and the frustrations of sledding. Now sledding is a very hard sport, especially for us shorter women that don't have a whole lot of height, leverage, or we don't have a whole lot of weight to toss a 400, 500 plus pound snowmobile. So we're gonna take a tour of my handlebar setup and I am gonna give you the reasons why I've made these modifications, the products I've used. We're gonna go through the pros and also the cons. And before we begin, I am riding a 2021 Polaris Chaos. It's a 850 with a 155 inch track. So here I have a custom design setup by Cheetah Factory Racing. I am very lucky to have them install this beautifully for me. Uh, they installed it a few years ago. I brought my sled into the shop and they came up with this masterpiece because I am a shorter woman rider. I believe I'm the shortest rider here in the Sea to Sky. So there was some new products that they were testing out to see how they can make it work for me. They knew my struggles, they knew my frustrations. So we came up with an idea that we could collaborate on. And I think they did such a great job on getting the correct bar, the correct riser, and every other gadgets that they put on here right for me. Now, from my previous sleds, I have swapped out many handlebars. I swapped out different kill switches, different throttle cables, different brake levers and that sort of thing. And so we're gonna get into that a little bit more as we take the tour of my custom snowmobile bar setup. So they've added this tube adapter here on my underneath my bar. And this is where we can fit a few of those gadgets so that it doesn't cramp up on my bar. So we have my reverse button to my snowmobile and we also have the kill switch that is sitting very nicely on this tube adapter. Next up, I have a one and a quarter inch riser and there is also a fancy plate that is inside here. On my past sleds, I've changed out many risers <laughs> trying to figure out what fit perfectly for me. I remember going to a four inch, then a three inch, then a two inch, and then one and a quarter inch. The pro about the one quarter inch riser is that it really truly fits me like a glove, whether I'm on a Skidoo or a Polaris. The con about the one and a quarter inch riser is that it can scratch up on your panels, on your plastics. I rocked a one and a quarter inch on my skidoo and because of my finger throttle it was scratching my wrap it was scratching my plastics when i would carve now i didn't care about that because again having a lower setup handlebar just made such a big difference for me in my sledding that i could really care less that it was damaging my wrap um, but that's just something to consider when you are dropping your handlebar very low is that there is a slight chance that you might scratch up your wrap, you might scratch up your plastics. On the Polaris though, I none of my gadgets hit any of my plastics because the sled does sit up a little bit higher. Now, if you're snow checking a snowmobile, let's say you're doing it with Polaris, well, they've made it really easy where you can customize the riser of your handlebar. They have an option for tall, medium, and short. Now you might be wondering, well, what's a riser? Well, a riser is basically what it sounds like. It raises your handlebar to the height that you want it. 
So if you were taller, you would want your riser to be higher. You want your handlebars to sit higher. If you're shorter, you want your handlebars to sit lower. If you're looking for a custom riser, well, there are a few companies out there that have these options. Um, the lowest is one inch and a quarter rise to 10 inch rise, riser. I don't know how you say that. Anyways, you get what I'm saying. So there is a lot of options out there as far as customizing your handlebar height to you. For me, since I am a shorter rider, again, under five feet, I want my handlebars to sit pretty low, um, close to my hips. I also want a sli slight bend to my elbow. I will post some clips while I'm talking over here so you can see me in action of how my elbows, how my arms are sitting and how my bars are sitting with this snowmobile. I will stand here so you can see so these are pretty much at my hip and I do have a slight bend to my elbow. I do like to ride with my legs with a slight bend. And again, this, this rise and handlebar setup gives me way more leverage than the stock riser that it comes with. Okay, next up, we're gonna talk about my handlebars. Now, there are different types of handlebars out there on the market. There's different sizes, there's different widths, there's different circumferences, and also there are different ones with risers that are built into the handlebar. Again, I've tested a lot of handlebars and I was rocking 30 inch width handlebars, but I finally found a bar that works really well with the width of my shoulders and I really do feel strong and I feel like I'm in the right attack position while I'm riding. And that's what you're looking for. You wanna make sure that you feel really strong and that you're solid while riding. You're, you don't want your, your arms to be out. This doesn't have a whole lot of leverage for me per se. I have way more control if I am a just slightly shoulder width apart, just a little bit out, and I have a little bit more control while I am riding. For me, having a narrower bar in width has helped me a ton getting that sled on edge. I am rocking the Rooster 2.0 Cheetah Factory Racing bar, and it has zero rise. It's just a flat bar. I do want to include grips in this section. You need grips in order to hold on to the bar with your gloves. You can get different colored grips like I have. Um, again, you can get those from Cheetah Factory Racing. And if you are installing a new bar with some new grips, just keep in mind that you do have heated pads on your handlebars. So be careful, be very gentle when you are removing those heated pads. You might want to use like a, a hair dryer or a heat gun to remove the goo off of the bars and then very gently put those heat pads back onto your new bar and then put your grips on. I have a whole video about that uh, that I made a few years ago. So I will post a link up here and you can go check that out. I was riding a 2018 Skidoo. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, every sled is a little bit different, but it kind of gives you a general idea of how to put on handlebars or install handlebars and the heated pads and the grips. All right, so what is the con to a 20 inch flat bar? Well, the con is if you can't fit a whole lot of accessories, gadgets on your bar. As you can see, I do have this tube adapter where it has my kill switch underneath and it also has my reverse button here. You need to be strategic in placing your accessories and your gadgets when it comes to a shorter width bar. Next up, we have the finger throttle. Now, I was a huge snob when it came to the finger throttle. I just loved my thumb throttle. I sometimes don't like change. I say I love change, but when it came to my snowmobile setup, the thumb throttle was the way to go for me. Until I kept hearing about it, I kept hearing other women's experience with it. I made the switch 
And I remember just telling myself that it was going to be a learning curve and that I got to be patient with it and just to give it a couple days. And because I went into that mindset of switching over with the finger throttle, that day of riding with the finger throttle made such a big difference in my riding ability. I became way more aggressive with riding. I, my power turns became better. My carves became better because I had a lot more control using my finger than I did with my thumb. Now on my skidoo, when I had, when I switched over to the finger throttle, because my handlebar setup was so low, I actually had to add on a shorter cable for the throttle. I can't remember what exactly that throttle cable was, but we did have to shorten it because all of the cables were getting bunched up and the cable was sticking really high up, which was kind of dangerous at the time. So we went with a shorter cable, throttle cable. Um, with my Polaris setup, um, it's not that bad. I mean, it does stick up a little bit, but it was not, it's nothing like what my Skidoo had. And I've been rocking this setup since 2021, which has been three years. I have not touched my handlebar setup in three years. Whereas on my Skidoo, there was always something. I always had to figure something out for me. So I'm very happy with the setup. I am so happy that I made the switch to a finger throttle. I do want to add that at the time when I did switch over to a finger throttle is that I was doing jumps and drops. So building jumps and dropping cliffs. I remember doing my first cliff drop. Now it was just a small little drop, but um, big enough for me to scare me a little bit. And I was on the thumb throttle and when I landed, I landed with my chest into the bars and it pushed my thumb and it gave a burst of throttle when I didn't want it. And I remember falling off, I hit my face, I don't know, my goggles maybe. And I just remember biting my lips and I was bleeding under my helmet. I don't remember exactly what happened, but I do remember that initial hit with my chest into the thumb that gave me that extra throttle that I didn't want. And so that was one of the reasons why I made the switch over to the finger throttle or at least test it because I was getting into jumps and drops. And somebody told me that you want maximum grip when it comes to your handlebars. You don't want to go into a jump not having grip. Like with a thumb throttle, you don't have the solid grip like what you would have with a finger throttle. So I have way more grip with a finger throttle than I do with a thumb. And so that was kind of a no brainer to me. It made sense to me. And I wanted to make sure that I was jumping and dropping as safely as possible. And I didn't want to cause any more blips of throttle when I didn't want it. What was really important to me was having maximum grip on my bars to just be a little bit more safe. If you are going to go with a finger throttle, please get a finger guard. So my finger throttle is made by Munster. The guard is by Munster. And this way, if you have the guard and let's say you hit a tree or a tree branch and a tree branch is right here and it clips your finger, it's going to hit that gas just like how I told you about my experience of my chest hitting my thumb. You don't want those incidents to happen. You wanna prevent anything like that ever happening. So I highly recommend if you get a finger throttle, just get the guard all in one. And it's just, again, a, a feature, a safety piece that you should not overlook. Um, the con, okay, let's talk about the con about a finger throttle. Now. I've had this experience, a lot of women have had this experience where the cable can get stuck. It's scary, um, especially on those colder days. If your sled is sitting outside and let's say it freezes outside, you don't have your sled covered before you even start your sled. You want to pull your throttle cable a couple times just to loosen it up and get any ice that might have formed inside. Just get into the habit of doing this a few times if you do start up your sled. Um, I've seen it where people start their sleds up and then it just goes out of nowhere. I've had the experience of where my throttle got caught, it got frozen, 
and it was out to here. So you always want to make sure that you have your tether on you and on obviously on your sled. You cannot ride your sled without it. Um, so if that ever happens, if your throttle just kind of, if your sled just takes off, pull this immediately. Or if you're falling off, um, your tether will just shut down your machine. That's happened to me. Um, I have also been hit by another snowmobile that their finger throttle cable got stuck, was frozen. Um, it hit actually a sled, but it had enough power that that sled then not hit me and then I went falling down. I don't want to scare you though. If you do want to make the switch, just keep in mind that you do want to give this a couple pulls if you're if the weather's been really cold. Another tip would be, I got this from Ira Ninalina. Um, she would put a plastic bag around her finger throttle so that no rain or the wet snow wouldn't get into her finger cable that is if her sled was going to be outside overnight it's usually in the mornings when this can happen because if the sleds are sitting outside that's when it, condensation can freeze over any water can freeze in there that's a tip is to put a plastic bag if you're spending the night in the backcountry keep that in mind or if you're coming home at the end of the day either put your snowmobile in a space a heated space if you can like a garage shop or put your snowmobile cover over top and that should help with any type of moisture getting onto your throttle cable. Even though these sports are a lot of fun, we got to, you know, remember that these machines can be lethal if they're not used properly. <laughs> and we're going to talk about the obvious, the thing that sticks out like a sore thumb. This is my mountain strap and some people have it others don't and I like to have it because I don't have a big wingspan to reach the other side of my handlebar if I'm in a very tricky situation where I need to either stay on edge, drive really slow, move my snowmobile from side to side so I can yank on my mountain strap. All sleds come with them and I would say the con about a mountain strap is that if you're getting into doing jumps and you're getting into doing drops well this guy gets in the way and oftentimes can smack you in the chest you can get winded and so that is why a lot of athletes that you see don't have a mountain strap because of that reason so that's the mountain strap we also have this fancy padding in the middle here and this is basically just protecting my riser so I don't get a bunch of snow. Uh, it doesn't rust out on the handlebar and it's just uh, a nice fancy way of branding. CFR. All right, let's talk about brake levers. I have my Polaris stock brake lever on my sled, but I have used aftermarket brake levers and I do recommend getting the Skins Protective Gear brake lever. It's a lot closer to the bar. If you have tiny fingers like I do and you don't have the finger span to pull in the brake, then yes, I highly recommend on getting a shorter, easier pull brake lever for your snowmobile. I haven't made the switch yet because I don't feel that my brake lever is as far as it was on the skidoo, so I never made that adjustment. I think that if I were to start jumping again and doing drops again, I would definitely make that change because I actually use my brake all the time. The con with the Skins Protective Gear brake lever is that it's heated, which there's nothing wrong with that. I sure do love heated grips. I love heated brake levers and finger throttles, but it can get hot real quick. It could almost feel like you're burning your finger. That's the only con that I have with the Skins Protective Gear. But mind you, I, I mean, you have a button to turn off the heat on your grip. So that's not too much of a, a worry when you are making the switch to your brake lever. Next up, we're gonna talk about my kill switch that I have on my tube adapter 
not on my handlebar. The one thing about this kill switch, it is stock. You'll see that stock on Skidoo and Polaris. If you have the kill switch on your bar, keep in mind that your chest might hit the bar and your machine will automatically turn off if you push in that button. So if your kill switch is on your bar, then I suggest either turning it away from your body and keeping it so it's facing towards the skis of your snowmobile. Another option is getting a aftermarket kill switch. Munster has one and basically it's a button where you have to hold the button for it to turn off. It's a nice feature because if you are riding and let's say your chest or your hands by accidentally like brush on any of your gadgets um, or bump into it, it's not gonna turn off your machine. So it can prevent any accidents from happening. Um, the con on that type of kill switch with the button, with the hold button, is that if it does freeze over, let's say you, are, you live in wet, mild conditions and then all of a sudden it freezes overnight, well, that button can freeze over and so you can't push it in at all, which has happened to me a few times, but that's why we have our tether so that we can pull the tether off and that will shut down our machine. So that would be the con with that. <laughs> trying to think of what else. And that's the end of my tour of my handlebar setup that I've customized to fit me perfectly. I hope this video has helped you in deciding on what you can do to customize your handlebar setup for you. Until our next hangout, keep killing it safely out there and I'll catch you guys next week. Thanks for watching.